Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Unstoppable Overcomers. I am super excited tonight to have Dr. Laura Cobb on the show tonight. Welcome, Laura. Hi, happy to be here. Thanks. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. That's always a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I grew up in the Midwest and near Chicago and suburbs and uh, relatively uneventful childhood, I suppose. I guess it's always in hindsight, it always seems more eventful uh, when going through it. I'm the youngest of four, and my parents divorced when I was young. And um, didn't really feel like I had much of a voice. Um, bullied a lot by my siblings, and so I became a bully, because bullying's all about power. And I think that's one of the main themes throughout my life, is that I always wanted some semblance of power. Not necessarily about around others, or on others more so about controlling and manipulating my world so that I can finally find some semblance of happiness. And pushing forward 48 years later, mm -hmm. I only realized that uh, the only time, the only way that I could ever gain some power and control is when I relinquished it. That's interesting you say that because the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, a, a child and what they can control and what they can't control. And I have found in a couple of relationships, whether it be with my nephew or my stepson or, or things like that, I think they go, t especially to things, they pick the easiest thing that they can control. So for, for my nephew, it was mm -hmm. definitely food. It yeah. was, you know, because that, I mean, the kid is as skinny as a rail, but I think that was the only thing he can control in his life because I mean, his, his mom left at a very early age um, and we all helped uh, stepped in to help my brother take care of his, ch his children. But I think that's why he was such a picky eater. Mm -hmm. And it just it popped into my head now that you said that. Wh what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah. Well, food was a big issue for me. I, I experienced, I, well, I want to say I suffered. I, I thankfully survived a 20 year battle with a, a demonic eating disorder that just ravaged me my entire life. It just completely took over. And I was about five pounds from death. Wow. So it was just, it completely ruled every single moment of my day. And it was the only thing that I could really control. And it completely controlled me. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, it really, it did, it, it controlled every single moment, not just just the moment that I woke up, every breath of every day, until right. I went to bed. And even then, it was just it, it was it was um I see demonic. I felt possessed, and I don't mean in it like a schizophrenic type of way or a religious type of way. It's just like it just was a um it was always there. It wasn't even like a shadow. It was just it, it just it control it owned me, and I hated every second of it. And right. at the same time, I didn't know how to live without it. So thankfully. Thankfully, I was able to get well, and I, I reflect on that now, and I can't even, for anyone who's listening, I haven't gone into the details, but if anyone is is struggling with that, I mean, it wasn't just anorexia or bulimia or, or exercise, it was everything. I, I mean, it was all all forms, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't die. Wow, mm -hmm. and, and that's... I, I've never been on that spectrum of it, but I've been on the spectrum of being overweight. And actually I was bullied all through school for my weight. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that when you said bullying to you equaled power and control. Mm -hmm. So uh, within, like we've only been on for four minutes and you, you've hit two of my triggers, like right there. And I'm, I'm, just, like, like, high I'm just like, I <laughs> like not in a bad way, but I'm just like, I'm just like, wow. Like, and these things are classic. Mm -hmm. Everybody I think goes through it at one point, whether they identify with it or not. But the more I'm, I am a, a people watcher and I, I love to watch people and, um, you know, f find out what makes them tick. And, and that's the thing. Like, it's all about power, can power control and, you know, people, bully because they want that power and and that is so freaking amazing that you within less than five minutes you just picked the top two <laughs> well i mean i went to i earned my phd in child development family studies so i didn't at the time have a lot of insight what was going on but i was quite observant and i actually I went to college to, to try to figure out my family well i i found out me and i still couldn't get well for a long time after i finished college that, yeah, I mean, I was bullied growing up. I didn't have any power. So it makes sense that, that 
empowered people empower people and right. bully bully bu bu bully people bully people it sounds so simple at the same time when when i was in the thick i mean i'm 10 and and even as an adult i remember working i lived in germany for eight years with the military i wasn't military i don't take orders well i worked with the military so i um was with a, a program i was a career counselor for a bit and a woman who i worked with she I know that I had these contemptuous feelings about her and towards her, and I never overtly said anything derogatory to her. It was just holding a space of ugh, not liking her and just not being friendly. And, and it was a bullying because I wasn't emotionally available. And I knew I didn't know it at the time. I think I had an inkling about it, but she was everything that I didn't like about myself. Very needy, a people pleaser, um, wanting to be validated because I'm an external validation junkie. I just, I craved that my whole life. I just needed that gratification to, to know that I was okay. Cause I couldn't give that to myself inside. So I needed that. I needed that. Um, I thought I needed it from others cause I was so vacant. I needed to fill that hole in the soul. And sometimes people say I hear, um, and I mean, I think thankfully, thank the goodness for the internet and, uh, Facebook in this regard that I was able to find her and make amends. She's all, what are you talking about? It's, it's not about that making amends is about allowing myself to not, feel that burden of self. Right. So it's a side note. That's totally true here. Let's just go to the comments here. We have uh, Inger. Uh -huh. Welcome. And Chris Berryman. Welcome to the show, Chris. And you're right, Chris. Hurt people hurt people. And that's one of the, it's funny because I was doing a video sessions all, all day Saturday and I had that was one of the things that I had said, you know, hurt people hurt people as being bullied all through public school, then, like you said, I turned into the bully because I, you know, when, when the kids, <laughs> the kids that I knew I could control because I was being controlled by, mm. min, you know, mean people. So therefore I could control these other, um, you know, other little kids. And it's funny, like I, I didn't even realize what was happening when I, when that was going on, but now later and, and I'm like, okay, I apologize to anybody that I have bullied in public school. So I uh, put that out there. Uh, right. Welcome, Tim. Hi, Tim. And the, and, right. the scary thing about all of that is that the, I realized, I remember the moment when I was in a relationship and the way I used would fight is I was very in your face and, and quite, it was tumultuous, it was volatile. And, and I used words and language that was not, consistent with how I am today. Although sometimes I think those, I don't see them. And I remember where I was at, who I was with. I don't remember what we were arguing about, but I remember, I remember, you ever hear the quote by Maya Angelou? She said, people won't remember what you said. They'll remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And I remember how I felt in that moment, saying these words that were not indicative of that person's character. It was just holding that person in contempt because I couldn't control them, meaning that I couldn't get them couldn't get them. You can't make anyone feel, say, or do anything. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't get that person to think like me or say, or do what I wanted them to say. Now I know that you can't anyway. And I was so frustrated about it. And, uh, and uh, so attacking the person was what I knew. And I remember in that moment that I felt terrible about myself because mm -hmm. I knew that that wasn't true and that I allowed myself. That's the only way I knew how to be because that's what I grew up with. And and was just, that's not absolutely true. Um, that's the only way I knew how to be because I was taught that you can have a feeling as long as it's a good feeling. If you have a negative feeling, which I don't believe that's the case. I don't think there's a negative feeling or emotion that you have to go in your room. I got tons of story about that. Uh, and so I learned that I didn't like how I felt. So instead of bullying others, I did it to myself. And all those words that I said to me and the way I controlled and manipulated myself with food and the, the deprivation and then the the affluence the abundance and then the restriction and it's a dance it's a sick warp dance i spent so many years there and i thankfully that I, the place I, I got well uh, it was it was a pivotal it was life-changing and then um i realized that that's the one thing that i have to have a relationship with you know, I cannot have sex. I cannot drink alcohol. I cannot do drugs. I have to, I have to eat food. Mm -hmm. And then there's a the people pleasing. 
kind of need people. And I adore Brene Brown when, you know, connection is why we're here. And that's, I firmly believe that. And then how do I engage and have that dance with people? And that's where the soul searching comes in and allowing myself to be, I could not, I was not a human being. I couldn't sit for three seconds in my skin. And when that silence isn't quiet and all I want to do is tear my skin off. And I don't mean like harming myself that way. Just I couldn't sit in my skin. That was just a, the worst feeling. And everyone thought I had it, had it all together. It, there was, you know, I felt like a fraud only to the extent that nobody knew what was going on behind closed doors. Yeah. And I don't know what you're going through or anybody in the audience who's listening. Everybody's got something. Yes, exactly. And and that's funny because I, I was going to do a video on this today, but I didn't. I ran out of time where... Um, I notice myself when I start hiding from people and hiding from my friends and hiding. It's like, because I'm hiding something back. Like I have accountability partners for just about every aspect of my life. So when I disappear, it's because I've slipped up. I screwed up. Yes. I had that bag of chips when I knew I shouldn't have had that bag of chips. And yes, I didn't do my workout that day. So therefore I didn't check in and you know, no, I didn't do what my business coach told me to do. So I avoided the appointments because you know, yeah. Yeah. because I didn't want to show up as a failure. And that's, that's how it's funny that all this is coming out. In one it's, all coming back, it's all coming back to me now. And the thing about that is, is that, that that comes into the mental fitness is realizing that the self-sabotage comes into play. Cause so like avoiding for me, um, I'm very busy, but I'm not necessarily productive. Oh, I'm so busy. I'm, I got this to do. I got this to do. And they're like, okay, I'm procrastinating. I'm, I'm getting stuff done. I'm checking my Amazon account. What am I going to order next? Or um, I got to um, attend this other summit, but I'm not playing on my own. Uh, just stuff like that. And so it's just the, the, what's the priority there. And the thing about it is, is that I'm a high achiever, hyper achiever, because I mm -hmm. felt I needed to fill myself up with something more. Can I get recognized for something? Because I felt like I had nothing growing up. I wasn't enough for anything. So I was good at school when I got to college. I, I, was, I was good at that. So I, I think I'll get another degree. I think I'll stay in college for 12 years. I was afraid to grow up. I just extended my adolescence. And then I realized, you know, that doesn't fill me up. And so you have imposter syndrome with achievers curse. Well, I feel like a fraud and then I get another degree and it still doesn't fill me up. And it says everything on paper says that I'm worthy in my promotions and whatever. I still feel like nothing. Like, I, are they going to find me out? What are they? So then being an imposter or, or feeling like an imposter and I know I'm not, but I still feel that way inside. And then, mm -hmm. so I'm hyper achiever. And I'm a hyper tasker, so I'm busy all the time. So I must be getting something done because I'm so smart, not smart at all. They must have, they must have, you know, made a mistake. And then the people pleaser comes in. Oh, I hope they'll like me. Maybe if I do something nice for them. Or I'm so busy, I'm a tasker, so I'm busy doing stuff to please others. And then I get pissed off because they don't recognize that I'm doing something for them, and they don't even know they're part of the equation. Exactly. And I don't exactly. know. And I don't say no, and I couldn't say no to me. Yeah. So where's the boundaries there? So the hard thing well, about all that is, is that when do we get mentally fit? When do we get okay with ourselves and say, this is not working for me anymore? Yeah. It's akin to allowing our hand. Like if, for example, some people say that there's no such thing as a negative, no, there, that um, negative emotions are bad. Well, there, there is no negative emotion actually because they alert us to pain. There's fear and there's love. Well, okay. If we place our hand on a hot burner on the stove, how long do you think we're going to leave it there? Not very long. Not long. Ouch. <laughs> okay. We need that pain. Um, we need that, that feeling of nausea if we ingest something that's poisonous. We need that, that feeling, that sensation, because then our body protects itself. So we need that, that sensation. It's how long do I want to keep my hand on the burner? How long do I want to keep pleasing other people it's not fulfilling me and I'm, I'm, I'm irritated and upset because I'm doing so many things for other people. I still feel so empty inside. How many times can I possibly procrastinate or avoid something and then it never gets done and then it starts to come out where people are upset with me and I don't like who I am because I know I could have done it. Or how perfect does it have to be? Is it enough if you just 
finish that report or finish that chapter in the book or right. actually do that speaker and send in that application to be a speaker. So getting mentally fit, it's not. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's like going to the gym, right? Like I used to work out a lot. I, used to, well, I mean, I was doing fitness competitions and I was running marathons and I was just always go, go, go. And that was worse when I was worse when I was about as sick as I could be. And of course I was looking great. Nobody knew. So it was just warped. And um, that's like when you go to the gym, being fit. If you go one time, great. You work out your muscles. But then you got to go again eventually because otherwise what's the point? It's atrophies. It's just like yeah. our mental muscles. It's our mental fitness is that we have to engage in those practical exercises that will sometimes challenge us. If I'm standing in line behind the dude in the grocery line and he's taking too long and he's talking to the cashier, I don't need you. Don't be talking. No, no, no. I need I got, I got, I got eggs, man. Let's go. It's not helpful because I'm getting upset. I can't control him or else I'll get arrested <clears throat> or um, I won't be able to get my food. And it's not helpful. So for me to just take a moment and literally it's something as simple as if you take your index finger and your thumb and just gently rub the ridges of your fingerprints together and just emphasize that. The dude in front of you is not going to go any faster. If you can regulate the breathing for about 10 seconds, something as simple as that. And there's so many different like, exercises to do. But um, allow the blood pressure just to regulate and or have you ever driven down the highway and someone cuts you off? Yeah. Quite regularly. Yeah. Yes. Not that. That's a good What's thing I drive by you? myself. What's the matter? Can you see that? Dude? I can't believe what the ex expletive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Blaming others ourselves or, or the world. Is it how long does it is it helpful to stay in that spot? That, that emotional state. We're in that self-sabotage. We're trying to judge. The judge is the biggest one. Oh, my God. She sits in the corner. I call her Anna. And she says, who do you think you are? Or who do they think they are? I can't believe they did that. Or the world's out to get me. How helpful is that to stay in that toxic state? Not helpful very long. So with mental fitness, we go to the gym. We use these, these little, these very subtle, practical, mostly tactile exercises that allow us to realize that we don't have to stay there for that long. So, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, I mean, like, I do feel judged by certain people, names shall not be mentioned. And I think to myself now, I wonder how much they're feeling inside about themselves. Because I remember what it was like as a bully, because I was bullied. And why I bullied? Because I felt like I had no control. And so when I feel like someone's judging me, and they're judging the world or you ever been around those people like the world is out to get me. What was me? And the per they're all, it's always about the other person. Can you imagine what's going on inside themselves? Exactly. That's a terrible place to be. And so not yeah. to judge them, but to just have some empathy. No yeah. one's like. And, and we never know what somebody else is going through. So that's why I always say be kind because you have no idea. Mm. No idea. Yeah. It's hard to be kind, however, when, um, yeah. And, and what I love about what you said is I have those, I have those words in my, my, my mind and they're right on the tip of my tongue. They just don't vocalize them once I feel like something's being torn towards me, even though it's not, it's not about me. People aren't thinking about me during the day, you know, that's, and that's insane to me. So that, I, I, that was what I had to learn first. You said something else tonight too, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, sorry, it was there, and now it was gone, and it's yeah. dancing in my head. It's dancing. It's dancing in my head. Oh. I like what you said. The uh, that wasn't it, but I like. I'm just, sorry. I was taking notes as you were talking. External validation. I think. I think at some degree we all want to be validated for something and and you know like you know why can't okay so maybe this is just my house i don't know but whenever my husband does something i thank him for it like if i notice that he did the dishes i thank him for doing the dishes if he did the laundry thanks for doing that he works seven days a week most weeks i work 
well, I have a full-time job plus I do this and I do a bunch of other stuff and I'm also a writer. So, I mean, I work just as many hours, but inside the house, not outside the house. So therefore I feel obligated, I guess, to do more things, even mm -hmm. though we are working the same amount of time, but I always feel like I should thank him, but I never get thanked back in return. And then I've never said, hey, are you going to thank me for your dinner? Right, 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 right. But I mean, and I guess now I'm just to a point where I was raised old school by a grandma. Um, my grandmother didn't raise me, but my grandmother's uh, th saying being uh, growing up was take care of your man. You know, a woman's job was to take care of her husband, take care of her family, take care of everything like that. And I say, Grandma, that's great, but you didn't have to work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> well, um, nowadays you I have to. A, well, this <laughs> thing about it is, uh, there's so many levels to what you just mentioned. There's a whole gender thing and relationship roles, gender roles. Mm -hmm. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on stay-at-home dads. So the entire conversation regarding what, who does what, in the home is quite near and dear to my heart. So we can, we could talk about that for hours, gender. Oh, hours. I'm talking about days. We can talk about gender stuff big time. Um, I love that you brought that up. I think that's more of an elephant that I can handle right now. Chewing. <laughs> like there's so much there. I mean, I'm like, like my fight, my neurons are going ding, 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 ding. So literally, and then the thing about it is, is it don't, um, I think you know, this will be recognized and acknowledged. I mean, I love, yes. quotes, okay. So, so, um, Tony Morrison, right. And I think when we're lit, when we're young, we just want to be recognized and validated. Like she says, when your children walk into the room, do your eyes light up? Mm -hmm. I still want that. Yep. I still want to know that I'm seen and heard. I still, when I was homeless five years ago, I still want to know that I mattered. I still wondered, does anybody know? Does anybody care? Does it, and not that I'm like, oh, look at me. It's just like, I didn't want anybody to know. And I thought about, and I think about this often now that I'm gratefully, I was able to, to come out of that place. And I wonder, does anybody really see them? I mean, does it, when I get, like I'm on clubhouse a lot, I get in these rooms and people are talking about homelessness and, and there are some words that are put out into the universe about why they're, where they're at and what they're doing and, and how they're not contributing. And, um, what demographic they may be a participant of or what they might belong to. I'm the first one to say, hi, my name is Dr. Laura. I was homeless five years ago and I have a lot of stuff. Everybody in this room, I don't care what your age, sex, socioeconomic status, race, religion, it doesn't matter, citizen, um, nobody knows. And that's the thing that to, to to allow ourselves to be heard and to be seen, that's the authenticity. That's the, that's the transparency is that I don't feel like a fraud anymore because I found me. I don't worry if someone's going to find me out as an imposter. I don't feel like an imposter because I found me and I'm okay with saying the stuff that I've been through. You don't need to know the details. Sure. There's a couple of things that probably won't communicate. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I got, you know, everyone's got to, you got to have one thing, you know, you got to have one thing that's yours. <laughs> that I, my, you know? I, yeah. I love that you said that though, because I always, a lot of people can find stuff out about anybody, but I, my, I have become an open book since I decided to go public with everything and write the book about my life story and things like that. And my thing is, you cannot hold against me what I've already brought to the light. Bam! I love that. That was, oh my God, I love you. That was. I've already awesome. brought it to the light, people. Yes. I've put it in the book. You can't hold it against me. I wrote a book and published it. It's too so, bad. It's not going to happen. You, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't use it against me. I've told the world about it. So, you know, and so no, no sense. And I believe that we all go through this shit in life to help other people. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's going to open their mouth, but the ones that open their mouths are the ones that are going to have the biggest impact in helping other people. 
But if, if we sit silently in fear, who's going to listen when we stand to speak? So those who are sitting silent in fear that someone's going to judge them, yeah. at the very minimum, at the least, then then at least I'll, and I mean, I guess maybe, maybe the way I use my, my platform as, a, as an educated woman, a white educated woman, and I don't, I don't mean like white, like, I just mean like that there are privileges that I have that I'm ashamed of a lot. When I was homeless, there were certain advantages that I had because I'm a woman, because of my skin color and because of my education. And that's disgusting. And at the same time, now don't ever assume that I got it all together because I don't. You can think you always agreed and whatnot, and then I live in a certain place or that I make this much money because I don't. And that's not how I value myself. It's not what I do, it's who I am. Mm -hmm. And for someone to assume that that someone who has a who has a different presence, that maybe they don't speak the same language or whatever it is, that they're any we're all different. It's what you know that there is like um I would imagine, have you ever heard of the melting pot theory? Mm. The, United States, the citizens of the United States, it's like we're a melting pot. Okay, no, you've heard that? Okay. I don't so, think I've ever heard about it, no. Well, um, okay, so that's interesting. So the melting pot, back in the day that um, the United States, that we're all citizens of the world and we came together and we're a melting pot, meaning we just kind of, um, I think of it like a big pot of chili that my mom used to make growing up, like chili dip with, oh, so good. <laughs> which means the, the meat and the, the beans and the sauce and the, 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 the cheese and the, um, did I say cheese? And yeah. <laughs> whatever else was in onions and whatnot. And it all meant together. So you cannot differentiate one particular ingredient from another. Okay. Well, so when I'm in the, in the boroughs of, of Chicago and I'm going, I go to Greek town and Chinatown and um, little Mexico or wherever it is, then I prefer the salad bowl theory that it's a beautiful conglomerate of all of these individual fragrances and textures and flavors that we can't differentiate one from the other in the melting pot. But sure enough, we can feel and sense and see and smell all of the various beautiful qualities of each individual contribution. And it's, it's, yes. it's like an explosion in your mouth, an explosion to see. I wish I could share um, a picture right now. It's um, it's just like an explosion of all the beautiful characteristics that we have to benefit each other, and at the same time, they, it's called the universe for one reason. It's una one verse song. Mm -hmm. We're all part of the same song. We're one song, but we can yeah. still maintain our own individuality and work together to create this beautiful product. And that's life. That's connection. That's listening to someone when they're hurting. That's not engaging in the golden rule. It's the platinum rule. Don't treat others how you want to be treated. Treat others how they want to be treated. And the mm -hmm. difficult thing about that is actually taking the time to listen. When yeah. someone's hurting and they say, you know, I don't know what to do. What do you want to do? Just listen. Well, what do I do? Listen. What am I supposed to do? I just told you, you don't have to solve anything. Oh my You're God, I love you. that. You already did. Just listen. I don't want you to do anything. I want you to be here. That's why we're human beings. Yeah. And Tim agrees. Uh, personal sharing, story sharing encourages each other and inspires each other. I agree. Hello, Marcello. Marcello. I think that's why, Tim, I think that's why, um, at least for me, when I, whenever I feel inspired, I know that I'm in spirit. Mm -hmm. That I know when I feel inspired, I'm uplifted. I, I feel it from right from my, my okay, see, I feel it right from this area. You know, I feel like I'm right yeah. from my core, and I feel like I'm 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 on the I'm in the wake of my mother's ship. Like I'm in my my soul journey. There's like yeah. a flow. Hey, that is uh, that is so. I think we are we've been bouncing off each other <laughs> since we started. This is insane. I've never had a show. Sure go like this before <laughs> ever ever because it's funny that you said when someone's hurting you listen and i shared a quick story um <laughs> on saturday so no anybody who's been following my story knows that we've had a rough time since basically june of this year um my grandmother's dementia got worse so on my 45th birthday i had to put her in a retirement home then my dad's cancer went crazy and he ended up passing away September 14th of this year. Then a f another family member had a heart attack and had to have uh, open heart surgery last, last week or the week before. 
So it's been a series of events that are not just small, that are major, right? So my mom, who has been taken care of her entire life by my dad, has uh, I, I gave a huge shout out to her on Saturday because she has stepped up huge and has done things because she's had to do it. She is so strong. She's stronger than she even realizes. Mm. And this just proves proves it. So she went shopping at Michael's. She lives in a town called Chatham, which is an hour away from me. I'm in Windsor. So she went shopping at Michael's, went to go in line. There was this woman standing there, but she wasn't really in line. And she was looking at this display. So my mom goes, gets in line. And this woman copped an attitude and said, excuse me, you're just, you're just passing me in line. I was in line first. And my mom says, well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were in line. You were looking at the display. Please go ahead in front of me. Well, then there was a lady that was with this other lady and says, well, we will not be having any fighting in this door. My mom says, I'm not fighting. Please feel free to step in front of me and, and get in line. So this, I just told you what's happened in her family the last five months. So my mom is upset. My mom is, um, takes things serious to heart even before all this mm -hmm. happened. And now, you know, so having someone snap at her in a public place just added to it. Mm -hmm. So she is crying, visibly upset, mm -hmm. goes to go check out. And the cashier says, Oh, honey, I could tell that you, you have something troubling on your heart. Do you want to talk about it? So my mom explains everything that's happened. And at the end, the lady says, do you mind if I give you a hug? So my mom, who is uh, really, you have to be in her central of her circle to even get a hug from her, mm -hmm. let alone a stranger mm -hmm. in the middle of a pandemic. Because my mom is kind of scared. I mean, she's double vaccinated, but she still doesn't want, right. she still doesn't want to be around strangers. Right. So, so she gives this woman a hug wow. and, and says, you know, thank you so much for listening to me. And the woman helped her with her bags and, and took it out. I mean, seriously, I gave a massive shout out to the lady that was at mm -hmm. the Michaels uh, working that day. Thank you so much for being so kind to my mother. And I appreciate that. And so when you let's just reiterate what dr laura had said because when someone's hurting you what <laughs> listen <laughs> hello and it, that went a long way this woman's been through hell and back for five months mm -hmm. and just to have a kind stranger acknowledge that she looked like she was hurting and to give her a hug and mm. you know that was huge that is huge. And I think something that makes me, Look, hey, right. oh my God, Brian's in the house. I know, Brian's in the house. Oh, Brian, oh my God, Brian. So yeah, the thing about that is, is that my stepmother right now, and, hey, oh my gosh. Nancy. What? What? Oh my God, we're like royalty, holy mother. So, I know. The thing about that is, is that my stepmother right now is caring for my father who has um, stage four out of five Parkinson's. And so the hospice is not only part of the, I mean, it's, it's even, it's been almost a month since I've seen him and I can tell, I mean, he thought my hand was the buckle in the car seat, in the car, in the car. I mean, it's just, it's quite obvious. And she has him every day, all day. I don't know how she does it. Cause it's not, and she has help as well. And it's not, it's just the work and the love when someone's not there. And they're not a shadow, but they're not who they used to be. And the love that's there. And I can't imagine the anger and the frustration at the same time. And and not even not like that, not what was me, but then you know, there's a certain level, like for me, I call it anticipatory grief. That's what I'm going through right now. And but then to, to possibly, I don't know if she's feeling that, but then, and then to suck it up as my mother would say, and just do it anyway. And some people say, some people say that love is a feeling, love is a doing as well. There are certain acts of kindness. What's our love language? For me, love language is, is go change a diaper, clean a dish and go run me an errand. 
Because yes. like, I don't want to like this. Is, oh my god! It's, oh my god! You, you, you vacuumed! Oh my god! I love you! You vacuumed! Oh, thank you. like seriously, okay? Just get off me! Don't touch me! Get off me! We can do that and then go. I mean, so go scrub a toilet. That is love. I know, right? I'm telling you. Oh, go move the lawn. So hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Oh my god! All the people in the house. That's the thing about it is that you know what? If we just listen and hear each other, and what is it that you need? And like you said, you're a people watcher. I like people pleaser. But what I'm finding now is that just resonated with me so deeply what you said as people watcher. What do they need? I'm not one like surprises on birthday. Oh, I don't want that necklace charm, bracelet stuff. I don't wear all that stuff. I said, I'll take them to the store. I'll put the towels in their hand, tell them what color, what texture, what size that I want it. Oh, that's not fun. This you don't get surprised. I'll be more surprised if you give me something I didn't want because I gotta take it back and then I gotta do something I didn't want to do because that pisses me off. Because and then you take the damn thing back because I don't want to do that. It gives me another thing I gotta do. You see what I'm saying? Like it goes. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, so yeah, that that is so wild because okay, so my husband clearly is a Michigan fan, as you can tell behind me. It is my office. However, I allow, I allow him to use the, put the signs up in here and allow him. I allow, allow him. him. I allow him. And that, that, that was our wedding colors. Anyways, our, our wedding was Michigan themed. So, um, because I honored him as well. I just wanted to get married. I didn't care what anything was. I just wanted to get married. So don't give me that one. Don't give me that one. <laughs> I just went down a rabbit hole. I, I love you. I love you. I'm like, all right, we're getting up. We're getting up. Let's go. Go ahead. We'll bring it. Go ahead. <laughs> I forget what the hell he was going to say now. <laughs> no, I don't care anymore. No, you oh, were saying God. I was a terrible, terrible habit of interrupting people. Go on, please. You were saying, I'm listening. Yes. Your husband oh, yeah. uh, wanted to get married. He just wanted to get married. The colors yeah. and the background. Okay. There, were, there was something to do with the fact that we just, you know, oh, that's what it was. Okay. So and my husband's easy to shop for anything Michigan, but with the border being closed for two years now, as of today, as Canadians can cross, but okay. there's still restrictions, which oh. we don't like. So we're waiting for them to be lifted too. So after two years, my ma my husband has not been in a Michigan store. He's going through withdrawals. So <laughs> he's gonna be like, what? He's going to be in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so normally I go all out and I buy, like, I know what he likes. I know what his son likes. I get what they want. Right. And usually he's like, Oh, well, did you go buy, did you go Christmas shopping for yourself? Those were, oh, I know, I, oh was like, I was what? like, oh my God. What? Oh my God. I love that. So, I oh no, that. I didn't like that because that. did you? Okay. Well, I didn't necessarily like that, but he made up for it last year. <laughs> tell me, tell me why. He, 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 because I think it's just the thought that counts. If he would have just picked something and said, here you go, babe. I was thinking of you. To me, it's the thought. At least you put some thought into it. The thought he was thinking of the thought that he was thinking of you. Did you well, buy something? Oh, you wanted him to buy something for you. Yeah. Ah, uh, so okay. Yeah. That's totally so okay. Let's have a talk. Last year he outdid himself. I don't know how he's gonna outdo himself this year. So last year <laughs> I, I I got a Jeep for the very first time. I love this thing. So he, he had a Jeep sweater made. Like I had showed him one that I liked when we went shopping somewhere and he didn't buy it. Normally he would have bought it and said, Hey, so he had one designed and made for me. And then, what? yes. And then I had, I told you I wrote a book. So what did he do? He took the cover of the book and went and had it on a canvas and then framed. I, I Stop. know. Right. Right. Stop it. Oh my he, God, what? He, yes. So it blew my mind because it's I was like, just like, it was like, it's like, it's like there, like in the, in the air, like, oh my God, there's yeah. like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And you would have thought, you would have thought that that would have been like a million dollar gift. How I, I just loved it. It was the yeah. thought. It was 100% thought I'm, and everything. I'm getting goosebumps right. Like I cannot, like I'm getting told goosebumps right now. What I'm feeling is like how he would have been like, 
Oh my God. I got just, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm feeling this like it's rushing across my body. Like literally yeah. goosebumps. Seriously. Like for him to be like, to be in witness of you seeing that and just like, yes. I'm going to cry. Like knowing to be there to witness that. He, I mean, yeah, he did something, not, not something right. He did something completely for you. Freaking amazing. I know. Like I want to meet him and I'm going to say thank you for honoring her because like, if I saw like, I mean, my mom and her 60th birthday, bringing her to Paris and like, I, like, you know, she never went anywhere. And then she saw the Eiffel Tower lit up and then the lights and like, happy birthday, mom. Like, like that is to take somebody that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then how awesome is that, that he got to see you, like enjoy that. And then you're like, you had a bond, right? Oh like, yeah. Oh my God. I love you so much. And then he's like, I love giving that to you. Like, I love the giving. I love, like, I don't want, I don't want any gifts. I love the giving. Yes. The giving. Yeah. I am a total giver, like total giver, well, giver, I'm giver. I'm going to set some boundaries. Like if someone wants to schedule with me and I'm, my time's crunched and they press me, if you need an answer now, the answer is no. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you're doing that because I'm actually as starting putting up more boundaries that way. And I've that's how I got a whole week's worth of work done on Saturday because I shut my door and didn't allow mm-hmm. anybody to bother me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? I found that when I have done that, and and then when people have done that to me, when they've just outright, they don't need to give me an excuse. I'm, I don't, I'm not entitled to an excuse. No, that was doesn't work for me. I can't do that. Okay, mm-hmm. I respect it more. I really yeah. do because it's true. So some people I've heard a lot of women lately who their family members or their whatever friends are like, that's so selfish. I can't believe you're putting us before that. You're putting yourself before the family. And I told, I vehemently disagree with that. And I say, I'm of the, I'm of the, I don't think it's new age. I'm of the opinion that fill your own cup first and nourish others from the overflow. Yeah. But you can't give to yourself. You can't give to anybody else. And I, I love hearing that because I respect you more now, even hearing you talk, talk about it. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's exactly it. It's just, it's, I, you talked about people pleaser. I was the world's biggest people pleaser right here. Well, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm Whatever not. my daddy or my mommy wanted, they got yeah. whatever. Well, that goes back to the mental fitness, you know, like, um, yeah. you grow up and, and, um, it, it works for us for a certain time at a time. And we end up self-sabotaging ourselves. So for me, for example, oh, you were so helpful. Thank you. You're such a good girl. Um, you're so happy that you're here to help us out. And so that I give, give, give. As an adult, that doesn't serve me anymore because I'm giving mm-hmm. so much that I don't even know what no feels or sounds like. And then I'm, I'm irritated all the time because somebody asked me to do another thing or then I get frustrated. I got to bake another pie. I gotta, you want to get, get me, I gotta run this. We gotta go run another errand. I can't do this. I gotta take Johnny to, so, to soccer, Julie to piano. I gotta run, do this. For, I can't even cut my toenails. And because yeah. I'm doing everything for everybody else. Yeah. So then how long do you wanna sit in that muck? Yeah. And then you sit in a huddle and you cry because nothing's done and you've you done everything for everybody else, but no one's there to help you. Yes. And then you don't understand why nobody's there to help you because you didn't ask because you think you could do it all yourself. Hallelujah. See, that's the, that's a sick one. It's, it's the sickies. Two sickies cannot make a welly. So when you get two sickies together, like in a marriage or a relationship, and they're both coming from their own places, like maybe let's say someone's uh, um, hypervigilant, everyone's out to get me. And then you got a, a people pleaser. Oh, let's make everyone happy. Like this is, <laughs> those two those definitely don't mix. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine having a stickler, like it's got to be perfect, and then you have an avoider. I don't want to deal with it. That doesn't work well together. It's like huge codependency blowout. Like, big time. So that's where I come in. Like, you don't want to, don't, don't be like Laura. Then you change everything. And when you change, you change the rules of the game, the game changes. Yes. And then the rules change. And then you live your life differently. And then you realize, you think, oh my gosh, I can't. And then like in the moment, oh, I'm doing it again. Boom. That's when we call upon our Jedi. That's when we call upon, when I'm sitting on that cold cement stone on that church lot, my fingers are frozen and my toes are frozen. I have no idea where I'm going to stay that night because they just kicked me out of the church because that's where I stayed the night before. And all I have is a, a full belly for my breakfast and a sack lunch. And it's like, 20 degrees out. I mean, it's been colder. And I'm wondering, do I have to actually try to get into someone's car tonight to know where I'm going to sleep? Try to find someone's open car. Or am I going to have to sleep next to the, the rats with the dumpster again? 
and stop staying in that place. What was me? Pour me, pour me, pour me another drink. Well, that didn't, that was gone by then. That didn't work. So then how long am I going to stop feeling sorry for myself and say, you know what, this isn't working anymore. So I just keep doing the next right thing every day. The next, you keep just getting up. You just, and that's the thing about hope. Yeah. The thing about hope is that hope is helping other people every day to hold on and pain ends. I like acronyms too. Can't tell. And it's just literally like just being a model for those. It was great for a while and then it wasn't, and then it can get really great again. And it did. Mm-hmm. And then noticing all those individual little, little, I little what seem like small instances are so not small. Those little things like, like him, like your husband doing that for you it could have been a big thing to somebody and a small thing. Mm-hmm. And what if it wasn't what you wanted? The fact that he listened, it wasn't even about the canvas. It wasn't even about the billboard. It's the fact that he listened. Exactly. Knowing that you mattered. That's just the product. Yeah. Forget the product. That's the out, that's the goal. That's that's out there. That's out there. The whole process of I'm gonna get goosebumps again. Like, oh, he really did he really did listen to me. Like he you showed up and you stood up to speak up and he heard you. Yeah. He, it actually surprises the hell out of me of what he does listen to. Although there's a lot that goes through. <laughs> the the important stuff is yeah. you know is what he is what he he pays attention to which is which is good and sometimes he's a better listener than i am which that's okay which sometimes you know to him, to him out like okay you're saying the same thing what did you do today the same thing you did today you told me 10 minutes ago <laughs> so <laughs> they just want to be heard it's yeah. like, i just want to be heard i said it once i don't need to say it again but i do which is irritating. So I'll learn, I'll know better. So I learn better and I do better. You're fascinating. You really are. Exactly. So what? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I can't believe that this time is gone. I, oh, I Dr. Laura has, uh, we have to cut it short a little bit tonight because uh, Dr. Laura's got another appointment, <laughs> but I have been, I just want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure to see all the comments and the comments and it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, Dr. Laura. Like oh, I am like mind blown. I have never had an oh. interview go like this before. <laughs> Well, I tend to have it. It's like it's just pretty bad when the host and, and the guests trigger each other. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely it's freaking phenomenal. I'm your safe space. I'm a safe space. I will hold yes. I'll be, I'll be in Clubhouse tonight at eight o'clock. I'll be in club, oh, I'll be in Clubhouse in an hour and 15 minutes. I'll be a safe space for you. I will save your place in a safe space with grace. Yeah, that's yes. it. boom boom. And so if you want to reach out to Dr. Laura, uh, she is an empowerment coach, uh, nationally certified and licensed professional counselor. So if you need any help, (laughs) Dr. Laura is the person to go to. Um, And your website is drlauracobblifecoach.com. So, and LinkedIn, it's, it's under yeah. construction right now. LinkedIn, I love LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn's always special. And, and Clubhouse too. Perfect. So what last words do you want to leave our amazing guests with tonight? When the story is being read and everything's been told, And everybody's looking back on your life and what's been said. Have you found that you lived your dash? That line between the years. When the story's been already told and everybody's looking back, can you be proud about what you said about how you lived your dash? Oh, that's powerful. I'm getting goosebumps over here. <laughs> that, is, that is powerful. Wow. And as somebody who has seen somebody leave their dash and, you know, I guess we never really know the impact we have on somebody Mm -hmm. until we're on the other side of heaven. And I really, just living your life, 
not for yourself most first of all um and for others mm. and not being afraid to shine your light oh my god totally uh i mean seriously because if we have we didn't decide to do this show tonight guys look at the amazing content that you guys would have missed out on i have no idea and I don't if, know if, if you are just jumping in at the last minute, this is totally, you can definitely catch the replay. It is on uh, my YouTube channel, Unstoppable Overcomers. You can pick it back up on LinkedIn or fa Facebook, wherever you're listening from. And it will be uploaded to Audible, uh, not Audible. It will be uploaded to audio and on Spotify by the end of this week. So there is a million, not a million, close to a million places where you can listen and, and watch. But you, you really need to watch the Listen. whole entire thing. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Because, oh, my God. <laughs> that was the theme of tonight, listening. I think it was. I think it was. I think it was, yeah. Even though that wasn't the topic, that was the theme. No, this is, it's organic. It manifests. And one of the things that you just said about um, family was that um, and my father, like, he was there for my first breath. And although it's challenging for me to see what he's going through, it's, this is what happens. But there's one thing we have in common. Everybody, we, we come, we come, we're born to die. We are born to die. That's, we can count on that. That's the one common denominator that we all have among other, some that might argue other things. That's one of the things that we share. And he was there for my first breath. Hopefully that I'll, I'm going through what I am right now so I can be there for his last. I don't know when it's going to be. Now, thankfully, I went through what I did a few years ago in order for me to show up now for him because he was always there for me at, when I was born. Yeah. Now, maybe I can be there for his. And it's challenging to watch the last breath. But in my situation, because my dad suffered so greatly in life, death was. How I, I'm trying to put this politically okay. correct. Death was almost, um, I'm not going to say a reward. A really His suffering ended and that's when ours began. But I didn't feel like I was suffering then watching his last breaths. Um, it was because it was, it was, um, the suffering was gone, done and I didn't want him to suffer anymore. So it was like, I'm, I don't know the right word I'm looking for. I know what but, you mean. Yeah. I get you. I heard you. Yeah. I listened. <laughs> I listened. You listened. <laughs> you listened. Oh, thanks, Emily. Yeah, it was hard. That's that's wow. like watching them. Like it, it it's, yeah. it's hard. So when they're gone, almost like a relief. There we go. The word is a relief because they're not suffering anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when it hits later, <laughs> then it hits. But. Anyways, so just enjoy can, the moments you do have. The fact that we can actually hold this conversation that we're having right now, how challenging it is, at least for me. Yeah. That says a lot because I know there's somebody else who's feeling that way right now. I don't know who's on, I don't know who's, who's on camera or who's on stage. I have no idea. All I know is that these are tough topics mm -hmm. and not to shy away from them because they don't, everybody's got something. And well, like, okay, so we had nine days to watch. So in those nine days, we, we, I guess, had more time to process and uh, even build memories through that because I have pictures of our hands with his, which we have kept. So. Yeah, <laughs> all those things that people might think are morbid, but in the end, it's it's those yeah. things okay. that um, it's uplifting. It's beautiful. It's uplifting. The things that you'll never forget. It's not morbid. It's not morbid to see someone end their life. We all had to yeah. come into this life in some way. It's not. This is just a temporary. This is just a, a space. Yeah, this this is temporary. Just wait till we get to heaven. That's the real deal. <laughs> Come on, you faithful. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> My thing is, I'm not afraid to die because I know who's waiting for me on the other well, side. So I, I <laughs> are afraid of dying. maybe they're afraid of how they're going to die. 
Yeah. Well, I, there's one way I want to do it, but I don't think I should share it on, on TV. <laughs> Oh, we'll have that later. private conversation later. Yes, 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 yes. Anyways, before yes, I yes, get yes. into another yes. topic, <laughs> Dr. Lara has to leave, so I will honor her time. Yes, and, yes, yes. So hold on, hold on. I'll meet you in the great room for one second. And I just want to thank all our listeners because you guys are truly amazing. And this this episode has gone from wow to bizarre to holy crap batman so if you did if you're just catching this at the end you really know you need to go to the beginning and watch it again or hear listen again because it was absolutely phenomenal it was one of those Come mic the drops room called phenomenal women unite because you're phenomenal or if you know a woman you're invited <laughs> we're both phenomenal <laughs> Anyways, with that, have an amazing night, guys. See you next Monday, and we will have Radio and TV Tony on. Uh, yes, yes, TV Tony is our special guest next week. So I'm super excited. I want to learn all the tips on how to make, have a successful TV show. And uh, so I can't wait to talk to uh, TV Tony. Um, so with that, have an amazing evening. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye-bye, Bella. Ciao. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.